Well, stupidly, I've come to the river today and decided I'll have a, I'll have a go for a non-existent salmon. So I've got this uh, purple hair wing creation on, uh, fishing it with a single barbless hook, and uh, it's been a, a few weeks since I've been down to the river, and this pool that I enjoy fishing a lot has completely changed. Uh, normally at this height of water I could just plough in quite a bit further but there's been a uh, it's been hollowed out uh, quite a bit with the floods and the gravel has been deposited close to the bank so anyway we'll see I've uh, I've bought a new fly line to uh, use next year for a little bit of uh, lure fishing for the rainbows. It's a five to seven thistle down line. It's quite a lot heavier than the three and four weight outfits that I use, but I have to admit that when I'm throwing three and four inch uh, lures at rainbow trout you you need a bit of weight in your fly line to uh, get a reasonable cast out I know if people have subscribed in the past with my uh, um, from videos about the sea trout fishing unfortunately this this year so many times when I could go out the river was completely unsuitable for fishing either a, a extremely bright sunny day with a chill wind or um, a flood of maybe five or six foot I mean, the weather is completely bizarre. Two days ago, leaving the house at the time I, I left this morning, it was minus one. Now it's uh, 13 degrees. Luckily, there isn't too much wind because the uh, wind at this time of year fills the river with a layer of leaves that uh, take some avoiding. So as the winter approaches, I'll be doing um, quite a few videos on tying different flies that I use. Looks very nice that in the water.
I must uh, treat myself to a proper waterproof wading jacket next year. This is obsession in the tackle industry to have breathable items and uh, I don't want them to breathe, I just want them to act as a barrier between me and the, and the non-stop rain. Ah, now I've seen something splash in the extreme distance in the middle of that uh, bottom pool there. Anyway, it'd be worth putting a line over it. In the 70s I, I had a fishing holiday with some friends and we were going up the east coast and there was a place there where you could uh, watch a, a big build up of salmon running up uh, this particular river. I, I'm not going to pretend I can remember which river it was but anyway you used uh, lean over the bridge and you'd see it was a protected area and you'd see maybe a couple of hundred salmon lined out in this pool and it was quite interesting to note that some of the uh, fish would just sort of swim back a little bit and then maybe swim up stream about 20 yards and then come leaping out of the water so it, let's assume you hadn't seen what was happening you'd a lot of people would think well where that fish should show and that's where it was actually lying but it wasn't it was uh, quite a bit further downstream well uh, it's ended the way I thought it would with uh, nothing I, I tried a couple of different stretches didn't see any fish uh, didn't see anything actually uh, I don't regret coming out it's it's always nice to be out in the countryside especially in these beautiful places even on the, a miserable wet day and at least I can still go fishing unlike my good friend David Hayward who unfortunately died of brain cancer last Wednesday he's been a, a fishing companion of mine for about 38 years so sadly missed anyway thanks for watching bye for now bye